Hi, and welcome to Fawns and Porter's Urban Basics Block of the Month featuring these lovely Northcott fabrics. I am your host, Jenny K. Parks. If you want to know more about me, you can check me out on my website, JennyKQuilts.com, or on YouTube, Jenny K. Quilts. So let's get started. This quilt is lovely, and we're gonna, I'm going to take you step by step through everything. It may look a little complicated and intimidating, but don't worry, we'll do it, and it's going to be great. Today, we're going to focus on flying geese blocks. And I do have a bit of a confession to make. Before I started filming these videos, I never made flying geese. Not a one. I was a flying geese total newbie. But uh, I think I've gained pro status with how many you have to make for this one and, and for other projects. And I'm going to show you easy ways to do it. I think because part of it, I avoided them because it was a little bit intimidating. There's so many different methods that you can do and like special rulers and stuff like that. So like, mm, I think I'm going to avoid that complicated block. Well, it's not that complicated, and I'll show you how. All right, so a couple of things that I want you just to remember over all of the stuff that we're going to be working on. You have two secret weapons here because a lot of the stuff is going to be on bias. It's going to be more stretchy and on point and that kind of arrangement, and you have to be careful because if you don't treat it with respect, then it's going to get out of square and it's going to cause you problems. And to avoid those problems, I have a couple secret weapons. One my spray bottle. This is, and when I spray something, when I mist it, I am not messing around. This is a serious industrial spray bottle. I fill it up with water. It's right there by the iron with me whenever I need it. So when I'm getting the fabric ready to cut, I will spray it with the spray bottle, get it nice and damp, and then I will spray it with spray starch. This awesome stuff. Because, and this is my favorite, it's just the cheapo version. I know their um, uh, Best Press is also another option, so you could try that too. But I spray it on there, and the combination of the water and the starch, they work together, and they just give you a nice, nice texture and much more easily controlled. Um, so we can better control those triangles and all the bias edges that we have to deal with. Okay, first step, flying geese. All right, so this is our, this is our sky for the flying geese. And we're, I'm gonna show you this method of putting it together. I'm gonna take, oh, I'm sorry, this is our goose and the white's gonna be our sky. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this seam guide here and I'm gonna line it up so that the, this yellow line, yellow and black line goes right through the middle from corner to corner. Then I'm gonna take my pen. Now I'm using a red ink pen here today. When I made it at home, I just used, let's see, I think I used a combination of, I, I had a pink um, uh, pencil and just a regular lead pencil. But my adage is whatever you need so that you can see it. And um, I, I don't worry too much about using the red ink. On, on here, I wouldn't use it on the whole thing because I would just be afraid. I mean, it'd be me to mark up something in the wrong place, but I'm doing it for you guys. I wanna make sure that you can see exactly what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna hold it here and I'm gonna draw a line on either side. Oops, I don't think it made a very good line here. Let me try again. There we go. Nice strong line on either side. I try to get both sides at the same time because I, I'm afraid if I move it, then I might readjust it and things might be a little bit skewed. And I wanna avoid that. All right, so here I have four of these blocks. I've already marked these up here. I'm gonna line them up. Then I'm gonna sew from here to here. Um, I'm gonna sew across this stitch. These are my stitching lines. That's what I made here. I'm gonna sew from on one side and then I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna sew it on the other. Now what I do, I'll show you exactly what I do when I'm sitting down, when I'm sewing at home. I'll bring over this one and I'll sew almost all the way and then I'll line up the second one. I find that's easier than having to hassle with pins and dealing with pins while I'm there. But if you feel like you need pins, by all means, pin to your level of comfort. All right. Now you certainly can do this by drawing a diagonal line from point to point, drawing the line in the middle and not your stitching line, that's totally fine. 
I find I get better results when I've drawn my stitching lines on there. So now I line up my next one. And I'm really careful to line those up so those, um, the drawn lines are really right next to each other. Sometimes if I've made a mistake or I'm a little bit off on one part of my drawing, then I can, you, you might have to adjust just a little bit when you line it up. Then I'm gonna turn it around and sew the other side. There we go. Something to keep in mind when you're doing this is try to watch ahead of what's happening. You could watch what's happening right at the needle, but then if you're making a mistake, it's too late. You're done. Um, if you watch right at the front of the foot, then you can adjust for any mistakes as you go along. And you can see there I'm just, I'm just the tiniest bit off. It's gonna be fine. You wouldn't, you might not even notice if I wouldn't have said something, huh? It's just like a quilt that we point out, oh, I made a mistake there, I goofed here. It's all right. Okay. Now I'm gonna bring it over here. Now. I line up my ruler, I line up my quarter inch line on my ruler on the line that I've stitched. So if I've done everything just right, then I'm lined up, my ruler should go from corner to corner. Now you'll find when you're making a lot of these that sometimes you'll get a little bit off. It's all right, um, we'll just look at that as we go along. Most people will say, oh, I'm just going to rip that out or try over again or, you know, rip that out and start all over again. I say, let's figure out what you did wrong and then on the next one that you do it, try to change that thing to get it better. I'm all for going forward and not going back. All right, cut across there. And then we're going to press these to the white up to the sky. Typically, you press towards the dark. And as much as you can when you're making this project, do that, press towards the dark. But we're not gonna worry about it too much on this one because the technique is more important. You have to decide when you're pressing if the technique, having the block fit together nicely is more important or if having the, uh, the thing working out right, you know, having everything fit together nicely, which is more important there. All right, now I'm gonna take one of the other blocks, and I would do two at a time, but I'm just gonna do one for you right here. And I'm gonna line this up here, and then I'm gonna do the same thing, stitching down the stitching lines. And again, train your eye to look ahead of what's happening. And I really don't need to pin it. I just go slowly and watch, pay attention to what's happening. It's not something you know you want to watch an exciting movie to or something. Just take your time. <laughs> or play music. I don't think you really want to play Flight of the Valkyries while you're doing this. Just go nice and slowly. And I guide it with my hands. Now, again, I'm gonna cut on the stitching line. Uh, I'm gonna cut in between the stitching lines. There we go. Line up my ruler there, and it should line up just corner to corner, top and bottom. Beautiful. Now, I'm gonna press these again towards the white sky. All right, and I'm just gonna take my rotary cutter here and trim off these little edges because I want you to see how it's supposed to look. So 
So each, here we go. So doing that process will give you four of these. So you can do four at one time and they turn out very nicely. All right, so now we need to put it together to make our flying geese units. So here I have two of the colors that we're gonna to have to go together. And remember I talked about how sometimes things can get a little bit off. And it happens to me too, so don't, <laughs> it definitely does. And I, but I wanted you to see this. And I think when I was working these, making these purple ones, that I probably should have stopped just before I started making them. I think I was a little fatigued. I didn't do my best and I noticed all of these purple ones had issues. Because if you're doing four at a time, right, um, and you skew up a little bit on one part of it, it can compound and, and give you issues throughout the rest. But I want you to see, there's just a tiny bit of difference right there, right? And I need to sew, the, these are gonna go be stitched together like that. So let me show you what I do to accommodate for that. I am gonna sew, I'm matching these corners, and what I wanna do is I wanna sew on that X. X marks the spot. And that will save your point because, right, the point is the point. The seam allowance, I don't care. I don't care if it looks perfect underneath there. And it's, nobody should be looking at the back side of my quilt anyways. <laughs> and so I'm just going to make sure I stitch right over that X and it should be just right. All right, so you notice as I'm going, I'm keeping, I, I'm not so concerned about where that white is lining up with my quarter inch guide. I'm not paying attention to that. What I am doing is I'm looking ahead to this X that I wanna be sure to stitch right over. So as I'm stitching, I'm kind of visually lining that up because I wanna go right through the middle. Oh, let me pick up the foot there. Sometimes feet wanna Flip up those edges. Right through the middle. And then I make sure everything for the rest of the goose, geeses, are all lined up the way they should be. Beautiful. All right. So let's bring it over here. You can see that I stitched right through that X, yeah. So let's press it out and we'll see. On geese, you want to press up from the point. It seems to work out a lot better that way when you do that. Ah, oh, look. There you go, got it, beautiful. All right, so when you're, you're gonna put all of the colors together, and you're going to make this. Now, there, now we need to add one at the top and the bottom to finish off this part. So the block that fits on the bottom here, we're going to cut it in half from corner to corner. Now, you'll, you'll encounter some different angles and stuff, but when you're cutting across here, and sometimes we'll go this direction, just be sure you're being safe with how you're cutting. I don't want to see, you know, backwards and sideways or any business like that, because that can lead to problems that can get you cut. All right. So those two triangles, that one's going to go here. And then you have this blue, can't forget the blue ones. That one goes right up there at the top. Now, a couple things you want to consider, oh, now I gotta grab, is that we need to trim these sides. You can eyeball this and center it in the middle, but you know what works a whole lot better, and I got a lot better results, because I tried it lots of different ways when I'm doing this, uh, is using a triangle trimmer here. So you line that up. I love, I love these guys, they really are helpful. And you're gonna just trim off that little edge. And 
And I'm going to do it on this one because we got to put this one on too. So like I was saying, we're, we're dealing with a lot of bias edges here. So be careful when you're moving stuff around. Don't stretch anything too much. Don't distort it out of shape. Because that can really easily happen. You come up with a block that's supposed to be a certain measurement and you get there like, what? This isn't even close. <laughs> I mean, not that I've had that happen. Or just a little bit. Just a little bit happen. All right. So now we're going to put this together on here. Look at that. So the same thing that I talked about, the point being the point, we want to make sure that we preserve our points here as well. All right, we get it lined up just right. Okay. Now, well, as, as we get closer to the other side, I'm going to show you something. Because what can happen, even when you're trimming, is that the triangle might just be a little bit different size. And I have not found a real way to prevent it. Some end up being slightly bigger. Some end up you know, being just right. It varies. So what I do in this case, because it's just, it's just the tiniest bit over, I'm just going to kind of adjust it a little bit as we go along and I'm just holding it in place that extra bit will be, get taken up and it's not going to matter in the long run it takes up some of it and it's going to be fine though okay and we come and I'm going to press and I just to continue to press everything in the same direction I'm going to press towards the upper geese I think the whole block just works better that way. But if you find in the intersection that you're piecing it to that it works better to press it in the other direction, by all means, press it the other way. Now we need to put this top on. And this is one where I want to sew from the top because that X is important, right? We want to pay attention to that X. So I'm going to do a little bit more fiddling to get this one just right. I'm going to just going to put a pin in on either, either end just so I can keep track of it. Now if you find that your triangles are a lot bigger or they got more stretched, Putting the baggy one on the bottom, the bigger one on the bottom, where it's going to interact with the feed dogs, is a way to ease it all in together. All right, line up here. And I'm also watching, there's my little point that I want to make sure I meet. So I'm watching it as it lines up and kind of fiddling a little bit with it as I go. I find doing it while I'm sewing is more helpful for me than pinning it all and then going to sew. Oh, and you see, I, I had a little bit of the blue sticking out. If you just put your hand underneath there and adjust it, that works great. All right. And we're going to continue to press towards the point. And I'll flip this over and, and press it one more time just to make sure everything meets really well, just to make sure that's nice and flat. You don't want to fold any pleats in there or anything because <laughs> that's going to mess you up. But look at that, look at that. We got that point pretty nice. That's great. Okay, now the next thing that we need to do to complete our flying geese blocks is we need to add these guys on there. Now see how it's kind of coming together? 
Look at that. Oh, let me do it there. That's a proper looking square. Okay, and it's very important on here that there's a couple key things, and I wouldn't, I'm not just gonna say here, attach this, because there's some tricks that are gonna determine how square your block ends up. So I'm gonna show you some of those and take you through that a little bit. I've trimmed these edges. You might think, oh, they're so big. You know, what's the big deal? I'll just eyeball it or something like that. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that, my friend. That's going to cause you problems through the whole process here. Uh, and believe me, I know because I tried that way too. What I want to do is I want to sew this side up. Now, I'm going to put a pin in at both ends just so I'm keeping everything nice and secure. So nothing run, runs away from me. And again, nice and secure down at this end. All right. Now I want you to see this is a little bit bigger, isn't it? And that's part of why I want you to do it on the bottom. And we're gonna stretch a little bit as we go. And then the other thing that we have to contend with is this little part right here, where the X marks the spot. We wanna be sure that we stitch right over that. But because of how we had to press everything, that's not gonna work. So what I do, a little trick here. I take a pin and I poke it through that X. I'm gonna take a little pencil here. And I'm just going to draw a little line. That tells me that's, that's where I want to stitch. And I try to stitch just on that line or just slightly to the side. Just slightly to the right of that seems to give me better results. So I'll poke it there. Give us a little line. Go through on each one. Now, sometimes, you know, on something like this, I wouldn't necessarily be so particular. But because we're dealing with so many colors, so many sharp points, um, that if you miss on one, it's going to be easy to see. So this will help us avoid that. Here, I don't need to worry. I just know my quarter inch will take care of it, and we should be good on that part there up at the top. All right. So let's stitch this on. So with the, the bigger triangle on the bottom, I can get it, I, I can kind of pull a little bit and help adjust it. The feed dogs will help to ease that in. So we're gonna get a nice finished result. And I just aim for those lines that I marked on there. And you're gonna find all throughout this, the, the flying geese, um, you might come over a little bump. I might have to wheel with your machine a little bit to finagle it into the right position. but. You can see it's going to be really nice when it's done. All right, just about all of it eased in beautifully. Let's see how it looks. Oh, 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 I love it. Okay, so let me press this. Now, because we're dealing with so many points, it's a good idea to kind of set the seam that we're working with to heat it up, right? Make it more compliant to what we want. There you go. Lovely. All right, so that's one side. Here's the other side, and that is the completed block, your flying geese blocks. Okay, 
So next time we're going to talk about, we got a lot of ground to cover, the Western Star Block, London Roads Block, and Four Corners Star Block. Don't miss it. I've got a lot of stuff to share with you. So I'll see you next time. This episode of Urban Basics Block of the Month is brought to you by Northcott Fabrics, cottons that feel like silk.